everyone, hope you guys are all doing well. So it is the second day of December, which means a second video as promised. So if you aren't subscribed here, then please make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a video out every single day in December. I frequently get asked this question by students that are thinking about doing a PhD and not quite sure about their career options, what the job market is like for someone that's holding a PhD or what it's like to have a PhD and what jobs they can do afterwards outside of academia. The academic world is very competitive, very few students that graduate from a PhD actually continue on to acquiring a full-time job at the university, a lecturing position or, or become a lead scientist for a lab. It's very rare, it's not that many, the percentage is quite low. PhD holders do leave academia and go on to other fields. Now as much as I personally would love to stay in academia as well, um, part of me at the moment I'm kind of half in half out. Part of me doesn't want to stay because of the kind of politics and everything that goes on behind the scenes when it comes to finding funding, when it comes to um, establishing a lab, when it comes to having a family and things like that, it is quite difficult, especially for someone who doesn't maybe have all the connections and all the links. It is quite a challenging space to be in and I do think a lot has to be changed in that field, but that is for a different topic for a different day. So I'll quickly talk about a few alternative careers that PhD holders in the STEM field could go into. So STEM is referring to science, technology, engineering and maths. There are 10 options and 10 career paths that you could possibly go down once you graduate with a PhD. So the first one obviously as I mentioned is a postdoc or a lecturer. Now you could move university from where you are and go to a different university or a different country and try to become an academic. Being in academia is quite a difficult option but it is quite rewarding. If you are passionate about science and research then you definitely should stay in academia and try your best and hopefully you will be able to make a career out of it. The second career that you can go into is science policy or government. How to translate scientific research into new innovations in the tech industry. In general, you'll be working towards trying to translate research and science in a way that interests the public. You could be working in the healthcare government departments and you could also be working in the environmental departments. So just in general, it's kind of just translating research, translating science that scientists are producing into a more commercialized way, into a way that helps other scientists into a way that helps the public. So it's a bit of a middleman role, a bit of a translational role, and it's an alternative to working in the lab and being a scientist. So the next career option is going into patent law. Now I did consider this very briefly um, in my second year, I think, my PhD. Patent law is a branch of intellectual property law, and it requires you protecting the tangible um, innovations that are made by scientists or by healthcare, for example. In patent law, you can be an attorney um, in-house or you can also work in a private practice. So there is the option to earn a lot of money, but the hours are quite long and it does take quite a, quite a few years to train, even after your PhD. It is a branch of law, so you do have to train as a lawyer, um, and a lot of patent law firms do accept uh, PhDs, uh, many, many PhDs in fact go into patent law. It's quite a popular route for PhD graduates actually. There is a very distinct and specific path for PhDs to take if they do want to go into patent law. If you are interested in that then I'd recommend maybe doing some experience during your PhD, maybe in the summer um, or on the weekends or whenever it is, try to get some experience and find out a bit more about what a patent lawyer does. Being able to speak another language is a huge advantage in patent law um, and also being able to travel um, and that was one of the things that put me off. I don't really speak any other European languages and I also didn't want to travel too much as part of my job so um, that was one of the things that kind of put me off patent law. The fourth option is to go into industry or go into the biotechnology industry. A lot of scientists, especially those that graduate from a master's or even an undergraduate, do go into industry um, and in industry you're working with pharmaceuticals, so huge companies, huge production lines and um, you would essentially be involved in producing drugs. I've heard kind of good and bad things about working in industry. Of course you'd have to find out whether it's for you before you do enter. You can do an internship as well before you do go into that career path, um, but you are working with clients. In academia you have the flexibility to kind of try out a few things. Um, and you don't really have the time pressure on you as much. Whereas obviously the pharmaceutical industry is the commercial industry, so you would have deadlines and expectations. Essentially a corporate version of 
the academia world in universities. One thing that I read was that when you are writing a CV or a cover letter for going into industry, they don't care about your publications. What they care about is how well you work in a team, how efficient you are at the job, and the job specifications, what they require from you from that particular job. Whereas as an academic, I would be more likely to have put my publications at the top, first name author in this journal, whereas that's not what they care about. They this is an industry, it's a, corporate world. it's a corporate world, they care more about how you work with other people and how efficiently you are going to help them run their business. If you want to go from academia to industry, your mindset needs to flip and you need to become more corporate minded than um, kind of university student like um, academia like minded. The fifth option that you could go into is management consulting. Now I'm pretty sure every PhD student has considered being a consultant at one point. I do know a few of my friends that have gone into consulting from a PhD and they seem to enjoy it and it seems to be quite corporate, um, very business-like and very different to academia, although you are using the same skills as you use during your PhD. What a management consultant does is they solve problems for other companies. A company might say that we are having problems with this particular store, how can we increase our revenue, how can we change this, what is the outcome of this, what will happen if I do this, just so many questions to do with their business. Um, they hire a management consultant who delves into their business and tries to find out all the information they can and give them solutions to improve their business and improve whatever aspect it is that they had issue with. As a management consultant, you can decide which industry you want to work with more. So you can work with, you can be an educational consultant, you can work, so that means working with schools to help them with their budgets or maybe working with the government to help them with educational um, aspects and educational funding. You can also work for just general retail companies like Coca-Cola or Apple or Nike. They might come to your company and ask for advice and help with a certain aspect. Because you have a STEM background, you have done a lot of analysis, lots of probably number crunching, you've done lots of stats, you've worked very deeply with a particular topic. In management consulting, you've got a different job every single day. You might have a project that lasts a week, you can have a project that lasts a month, you can have a project that lasts for six months, and you can also travel around the world as well. So depending on where your clients are, you may have the opportunity to travel there and work from a remote location. Consulting firms do really enjoy employing PhD holders because of the maturity that we have and also because of the experience that we have in designing our experiments and running them, working as a team, writing a thesis and all the aspects that come with a PhD. The next two that I'm going to mention are to do with um, science writing and science communication. That's what is medical communications and publishing. So with this you might be working behind the scenes of a particular journal. So for example you could be working for Nature or Cell Biology, maybe editing or reviewing the incoming papers. Science journalism, you essentially are working for the media, so you might work for the BBC or The Guardian or The Times, and you're working on their science sections. So you will be finding out what the latest research is. They want to find articles and stories that will shock the public and things that are of public interest maybe a new cure for cancer. Your articles will mostly be things to do with causation, this causes that, so stop doing this, those shocker type of, of article. Usually the information that a science journalist writes about is unconfirmed data, it can be data that's not so reliable, but data that will kind of like shock the public and hit headlines. So the eighth thing that you can go into is banking or finance. Now I know people that have graduated from science degrees, a science backgrounds and have gone into finance. Again the finance business world does really appreciate people who have an analytical background. They don't really care for those that have done banking or finance um, as a degree because they can train you on the job. You will learn really quickly on the job. So being able to have that analytical, critical mind that you do when you do a PhD um, can easily be translated into a job in banking and in finance. The next one is the civil service. Being a civil servant can be very rewarding because you are working for the public, you are working to help in a specific sector, in government, um, or government bodies and there are a few different routes that you can go into. You can go into the civil service through the fast track route which I believe is a scheme that opens once a year 
I will double check that, but it's a scheme that opens once a year. You can progress the manager level within only three years and be paid really well. Um, even more than a lecturer or professor is paid. So it's quite a nice scheme to be on. And there is a science scheme within the um, fast track applications. So you are working in sectors that have a huge impact on the public and on people's lives. Um, so if you if you know if you're interested in not necessarily a front facing job, if you are interested in back end sort of policy and laws and that sort of thing within the government, then civil service is definitely a great but very competitive um, sector that you can get into after a PhD. The last field that I think is also very appropriate for someone with a STEM PhD is to work with a startup as maybe a data scientist or maybe an app developer, a data manager or some sort of like statistician. Uh, especially with a PhD, a lot of us might use Python, might use MATLAB, different uh, coding softwares in order to, different coding platforms in order to produce uh, our research, in order to analyse our research. So why not use your knowledge in a field that's so desirable at this moment in time in order to translate that into a startup or a company like Google. The nice thing about startups is I feel like it's a very friendly, kind of like nice cushy environment. Yes, it's probably more pressure, but you don't really have to dress smart. You won't necessarily be in the city. You'll be in a nice office with a modern layout. It just has that kind of Silicon Valley <laughs> sort of vibe to it, working in a startup. One thing that I personally really liked about working in academia is the lifestyle and um, being able to come in whatever time I wanted and leave whatever time I want but do but making sure that I get the work done. That was my top 10 selections of careers that you could possibly go into with a PhD in the STEM field. I think they all have their advantages and they also all have their disadvantages. It's really important and key to remember that there is no perfect job, there is no ideal career. Every career has its ups, it has its downs. But for those of you that are thinking about doing a PhD and thinking about what they can do afterwards, there's an absolute huge range of things that you can do and fields that you can go into and um, there's no reason why you should feel like a PhD limits you in any way shape or form. If you enjoy my video please give me a huge thumbs up I'd really appreciate that and don't forget to subscribe and stay notified for tomorrow's video don't forget there's a video every single day in December so don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified when the next video comes up and I'll see you in my next video bye